Welcome to another episode of the Indian Dots podcast. This week, we are with Suk Orjala and we discuss the following. Life as a comedian. Why Mott the Week sucks. Breaking into the comedian scene. The dark arts of the arts and much, much more. If you want to listen through and find out more, we'll see you on the other side. Cheers. What's up, people? Welcome to this year's episode. That's right, this year's first episode of the Indian Dots podcast. We are joined by a very special guest to start off the year. Her name is Suk Orjala, but it's not spelled the way you think it is. Have a think. We'll touch on that in a sec. She is. She has. Yeah, she currently has her own tour. Life sucks. Uh, life sucks. Life sucks. Life Whichever sucks. way you want to call it. Life sucks. But hey, if you look at the spelling again. We'll touch on that in a second. It's witty. She also has an array of appearances on TV shows ranging from Black Mirror to Mop the Week to EastEnders. And she's also the third Sook to appear on this podcast. But I think she's by far the most well-known. So Sook, how are you doing? Oh, that was a lovely intro. You can intro me anytime. Oh, thanks, man. That's nice. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. You do that because the other thing that Sook needs when she comes on is, ready? <laughs> she loves Mokit Singh. I don't know why. Really? I know it. She's you know not what? the same, man. Do you know what? It was about people were like, everyone gets really hit up about your entrance music, right? I guess, like, I don't know, maybe like boxers or wrestlers have the same thing as well, right? Yeah. yeah. And so everyone's like, oh, we'll do Beyonce or we'll do this because you're a Monica. And I was like, no, let's just do something really Punjabi and upbeat. Good. And then we'll do that. And it just so happens that I come onto two Malgid Singh tracks, like when I when I do my stand up, and now I'm really scared that he's going to sue me because I'm using his music. What, copyright? I don't think so. Unless you start slacking off his daughter, I don't think so. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man! Just last night, me, me and my wife, um, so Suki, you know, Shindi wrote your show. We were talking about some of the jokes and I was like, she does this one joke in D where she's talking about Punjabi school teachers. Not something we've covered yet in the podcast, right? But oh, she just, she's that. like, oh, she's like, but the ura era era is, it's like the, I, for me, that was the funniest part of her set. Um, <laughs> Don't ruin it. In school, man. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No more spoilers, man. Pay, pay no. money, go and see this one set. Pay money yeah, to go see the show, exactly. man. I'm telling you. You know, that's, that's the bit, like, so Jazz, you know, that bit is the bit where I can't remember what the audience were like that night, but every time I do it, Half the audience mm. is like, oh, I can't believe you're like talking about pervy Punjabi school uncles. And the That's other part, I like laughing because they're like, oh. but it's that whole thing about, you know, with our community about, oh, but don't talk about it. You Unspoken, know, like, taboo yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, yeah, but we all know that. It's like, I know every woman I know has a pervy football. Or a so that is all. <laughs> right. And then who who number who was the who's the equivalent in the lady side? Who's the kutti? You said it, that was a poor huh? the thai. Thai. The thai. The thai. Oh, it is thai. Thai. thai is like the Sorry, stereotypical. So one, she said yeah, she yeah. said this indeed. She said thai, and then there was a lady like in the second row, wasn't she? And you're like, and you're yeah. like, who's this lady to you? She's like, Yeah, she's a thai. And that was like so <laughs> funny. <laughs> That's ironic, man. What's also funny, Sook, oh. is that if I were to ever have kids, Sook, yeah. um Doctor, aka Karan and Shindi, have said they don't want to be Thai Thai. They want to be Masi and Masar. And I was like, oh, yes. okay. Yes. So you yes. want to be from yes. my wife's side and not my side? Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Masi Masar is okay. just accepted right. as the kind of cooler, you know, closer. Yeah. Duty. And I, it yeah, doesn't have always. the same appeal to be a puffer and a pua. And but you can break the stereotype, man. Break it, Doctor. Please. No, time. no, no. Listen, I will. I will. This is the hill that I will die on. Your dad's side are always more toxic than your mum's side. Mm. Every Nanake. single time. Nanake always, man. Mm. Nanake are always... Now, listen, Indy, who's trying to steal your acre of land back home? Zameen. Is it your... Do you know what I mean? It's your chacha or your thaya, isn't it? There's no... It's there's true, no mum. Yeah, mummy like, don't really care. Key. Bua doesn't really care. So that's low what key I'm going to say. Mad, I never thought of that. Damn. I should really have a word with my dad one time, you know. I'm going to call him. He's actually in India now, so I'm going to call him. He's in India right now. He's sorting the yeah. out, right? He's sorting the He's, out. He <laughs> actually is in India. See, I don't. <laughs> you can't make it up. He actually is there for that. Why are we all the same? He's there for that reason. And he's also there to sort out his Bindu license, his gun license. That's it. There you go. You can't make it up. There's nothing more serious. Your, 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 da- your dad is Look, a if G-man. you ever met him, you'd yeah. understand, honestly. So typical, so typical. Mm. But Suk, tell me more about the spelling of your surname, please. So, viewers, so, like three spelling. seconds to guess yeah. how it's spelled, even though you've seen it in the title. It's not normal, is it? Because <laughs> you think Orjali is spelled A U J L A? J L A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this was spelled when my family came over to the UK in the 60s. 
Mm-hmm. And actually, it was my dad's cousins who first came over on his dad's mm-hmm. side. So, with the, and they, someone just went, oh, yeah, Ojla. And they just wrote it down kind of almost phonetically. Yeah. Um, because, you know, in Punjabi, would say Ojla, not Aujla. Yeah. Which is what people would say. And then it's just it's just kind of stuck. But our family in Punjab has Ojla with an A. <laughs> Uh, and we've got Ojla with an O, yeah, which I quite like because now I'm like, oh, well, we're definitely related then if, you know, you've got the Ojla with an O as that's well. True. But also um, I'm annoyed because if it was A, I would have been at the top of the register at school. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. Simple things in life. Simple that things in life. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So there you How go. do you, there you go. And it, say it? Ojla. Uh, Ojla. Ojla. Ola. Ojla. Uh, Ola. Or everything and anything that you can imagine. The mispronunciations are all out mispronunciations there. Mispronunciations, wild. I saw on Mutt the Week when you appeared with Dario O'Brien. He said, suck. I was like, thanks, man. Appreciate that, bro. <laughs> Cheers. Do you know what? Let's go to Dead so Down, suck. I was like, oh, <laughs> Do you Dara, know what? Come on, man. I actually sat with him before. He was really nice to me. He's always really nice to the newbies. Yeah. So he um, was like, you know, he was like, you know, I want to get your name right. Because he said, you know, people always get my name wrong and it's so <laughs> annoying. And I was like, great, great. Here's a white man who's actually taking time out to think about something else apart from himself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, it's suck as in book, not suk as in Moroccan market. It's yeah, suk as in yeah, book. Yeah. And he was like, book. yeah, yeah, yeah. I great. get it. I get it. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, 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 okay, grand, yeah, got it, got it, got it. You know, and then he goes, like, okay, I'm suck. And I'm like, oh, my oh, God. Oh, mate. Okay. And, and then in the end, I was just like, I'm done. Maybe I wouldn't <laughs> have done. this. I mean, and this is me shortening my name. You know, imagine if I just used Sukajit. Like, God knows. Is that, is, that, is that your actual full name? Or? No, it's my full name. That's yeah. not that bad. Do you, know what, do you know what Indy's full name is? Have a guess. Uh, is it like a typical Indy? Yes, yes. In- yeah. It's typical. It was not Indy, but it's not typical. It's not Indrajit. No, it's not Indrajit, no. but it is typical. Indrajit. Close. You're getting closer. In uh, terms of the well, letter, essentially, could, that, there's that only about three the more variations you can go through. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it then? I only know in. So, in is, is it, a P. So keep G. going in the alphabet. Indrapal. <laughs> no, keep going up in the alphabet. You're, you're getting oh, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Hold go on, towards sorry. Z. Go towards Z. The suffix starts with something closer to Z, but not P. P Q R S T. What's after that? Close it to Z, but it's not a Z. Huh. What is it? Come on, it better be good now. It starts with V. In the V. Huh. That's a wicked name. Is it? He That's like a it. wicked name. My sister he doesn't, he doesn't gave me that like name. It. No, in the V is a wicked name. I had someone in, um, I don't know if they were in the show that you came to, but huh? his name was, um, no, maybe it was, uh, his name was Vanraj. Vanraj, what a Vanraj name. Oh. Literally, it's like, like, it's King... like Hans Raj Hans. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, when you get to like, I'm 37, I thought I'd heard every single Punjabi name there was nope, on the planet. No, no. And he was, I was like, what's your name? He was like, Vanraj. I was like, as in the king of the forest. He was like, yeah, pretty yes, much. That's nice, that is me. That's yeah. a very nice name. <laughs> that's me. It's a wicked name. Yeah. Mm. There are some anyway. old school names. Like we've got some friends, Sok, who actually two of our friends were actually named by the Gyanni at birth. Yeah. Which doesn't Oof. happen that often. Maybe the Akkar, mm. but act- so Kartar and the yeah, Rok, you know, proper. Uh, wicked names. You yeah. don't like, yeah. you know, I'm, I sometimes I mock my um, my wife sometimes. We haven't got kids yet, but I'm like, it's not what you want to name. I was like, you know, we're the old school, like Kark, Kark Singh. Yeah, and, you, know, you want. Or like J. Like Fate, a... and you know, proper. Yeah, but imagine how the white people are going to say it, man. This is the I don't give a shit about white yeah, people, man. Do you know what? No, 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 no. I don't care. Oh, so no, again, no, no, no. at the show, remember that lady, second row. And she was like, oh, Karen, which one? Name. It sounds like you've been to all of our shows, man. Honestly, I've been to a lot of shows, man. <laughs> I'm my always there. Um, Number yeah. one fan. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, I want seats front row next time because you know you're not going to be heckled. And you no, can roast me. It's all no, cool, man. Like, I don't no, roast you. Don't ever sit in the front row. Yeah, but I, 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 I do it, man. I do it because I know I don't mind it, man. I went to America. I went to comedy club and they were like, basically, I got all the terrorist jokes all night. Of course you did. That's, that's of course you did. But I don't mind. I was like, I'm involved. It's good. It's part of the show. Um, but yeah, there was a lady, second row. I can't, and she was there on a night off or something. That lady with the thigh or whatever. And, yes. uh, and she remember, had she a daughter. Changed, changed the name? Yeah, she had a daughter and she gave her daughter an English name. Yeah, and then she changed her own name or something as, as well. Yeah. Or, saying, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, and the asked her, I was like, why did you do it? And she was like, yeah, so people will find it easier. And I was like, okay, I get to it. Pronounce. yeah. But I was and like, also, that's I, not I, the right way. I get it, but also I feel like that is such a deep-rooted 
idea that we have as brown people in this country where we're like let's make it easier for white people isn't that just like a massive kind of colonial throwback isn't it it's like oh let me you know Mm. oh let me make this easier I'll use you know because I know definitely my friends who were born in like the 70s their parents came over in like the 60s or whatever they're born in the 70s they were all given English names you know because Mm. they were like we'll make it easier for them yeah Yeah, we'll make it easier for them to kind of integrate and I totally get that as well because you do anything to survive but you know I mean I'm probably not going to have kids but if I do they're all going to be called like Bagheel Singh and like you know (laughs) like Old school Punjabi names. Got names, man. I like it, man. I like it. Part slap. Indy, we have a Tati whose actual name on the register is Maggie and her sister is Margaret. No ah, lie. So Sook's actually right. Like, wow. Um, that's so this, 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 this is absolutely right. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I think when yeah. that kind of fusion, kind of Jason, you know, those types of names where it's like, oh, it's a bit Punjab, like Indian, yeah. but a bit like you know, Scree light bulb type, you know, name. Yeah, I met someone called Shannon. And she was like, called her Shannon Deep. And I was like, you can't just put Deep at the end of a name. Can't just, you can't just, can't just brown it up at the end. Oh, Deep? <laughs> you can't. Shannon <laughs> you can't Deep. Like, oh, yeah, oh, now, Sharon yeah. Freak. Right. Yeah, it's like, oh, you can't be like, you know. Yeah, yeah. They've all got such, like, beautiful meanings, all these Punjabi names. Yeah. And they're all unisex. And I think people don't realise that actually they're not uh, gender specific. Yeah, but have you so, ever met a I girl called Preeti? Sorry, a guy called Preeti. You haven't. Yeah, but that's Preeti's not a Sikh name. Actually, I met a girl Good whose point. name was actually Good just point. straight Breathy. And I was like, you're not got a... Yeah. Uh, is, is that a nickname? No, it's unlicensed Breathy. I was like, oh. Yeah. Uh, we met a Kuri on a wedding in Candy in Brampton, which is like the brownest place in the world, right? And uh, spelling, like, as you would think. I was like, so your name's Breathy? She's like, no, it's Pretty. I was like, what? Was no. Like, no, she's like, no, it's Pretty. But Jambi Kuri, I was like, are you for real, man? Like, you're just messing with my head right now. Man. I was like, your name is Breathy. It's obviously Breathy. Pretty, and I was like, mm, okay, I was like, I give up. My how does how does that sound better than pretty? <laughs> I have no pretty. idea, man. How does it's... pretty sound better than pretty? I think it's a mix of like pretty and pretty. Yeah, it just oh, didn't sound right. yeah, no, someone is to have a word, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Have a word, so <laughs> anyway, that's my name. That's my name. So that's your name. So, so what was it like on Mop the Week? So, how how was it being on that on that kind of show with that level of prestige? Because I used to watch that as a kid, uh, man. I used to idolise it. <clears throat> yeah, same, same. Do you know what? Really, I was really gassed to be asked to be doing it. Such, you know, felt like such a massive yeah. honour. Um, I can't say that I enjoyed it um, uh-huh. because Ooh. you know what? It's a very no. I talk about it freely. It's, it's a very, it's a very <laughs> yeah. It's a proper. You know, I'm feeling the touchy now, but like yeah. it's proper um, white male environment mm. where it's all like elbows out everybody has to like run up to the mic fuck your dick out i did see that. that yeah i saw that yeah. and people would like ran yeah, to the mic a... you have to step back step forward on the quick <laughs> yeah. fire round yeah. yeah yeah constantly mm. doing this the thing is the way i like to work uh, just in day-to-day life and it's comedy as well is i like collaborative kind mm-hmm. of comedy you know i like working with people not against them and this mm. was all very much like you know everyone was like who can do this who can get in first no space for every anyone like i like mm. to just in day-to-day life when you're having a conversation you like to leave space for people to mm. talk right and yeah. so that you're mm. sharing an experience and <clears throat> that's not my type of comedy i've spoken to so many female comedians who've done it who they said, said the same exactly thing the same yes thing. yes i was about to touch on that um yeah. other, yeah. other comedians at the beginning who, who came on i think they, they introduced like one woman here, one woman there, and they never used to come back. Yep. And I was like, something's yeah. going on there. The reason. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, okay, all right. I get it. It's yeah. a male dominated environment, but what is it really? And I was like, it's that. Yeah. Cool. It's that, it. it's that. And it, it, yeah, it's that. And I just, I didn't, it's the only job I've done where I was mm. so anxious that I was having anxiety dreams after I'd finished filming. Wow. <laughs> so I was, I remember, I was like, my, my shoulders were up to my ears. I was so tense for about a week. And then I did it twice and I was like, bus, like, I'm done. I'm good. Mm. And it was such a big lesson for me to go just because something has got all this prestige and it's such a big name and stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Do it for exposure or whatever. But mm. doesn't necessarily mean it's like my soul calling or like my spirit really mm. like, you know, that doesn't mean that I necessarily love it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, sorry, I'll, I've got to be honest, because you know, I can't mm. lie. But um, yeah, it wasn't. They were all really nice. No one was horrible to me. You know, they're all yeah. really professional, really lovely. But for me it was just and then you also know that there's going to be you know Gary from Norfolk he's going to be kicking off on Twitter because he's going to be like oh no they've got Middle women England, baby yeah, <laughs> yeah they're like, they're like, oh, we've got Frankie Boyle he's not been on it for 10 years mate yeah, so, yeah. yeah. like <laughs> so um, 
So you also know that you're going to get, you know, rubbish yeah. like that from people on social media and stuff. No, like of that, course. So. I think the person I've seen do that very well, who's come to prominence quite quickly, is Mo Gilligan. He's jumped up the ranks very quickly. Yeah. Mm. And but but yeah. he 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 openly goes at trolls on Twitter. Like he will go after them yeah. and say, What the fuck are you on about? And then one time he <laughs> said, like, he said like a ghetto word, and he said, I realize I've said this word, it's gonna send Middle England Twitter into meltdown. And I was like, That's so yeah. accurate because it yeah. really is. Like, I can see it's gonna happen to you, but he doesn't care, it's just himself. And I think that's how you yeah. gotta be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And Mo's a great example of someone who's, uh, you know, a very incredibly successful comedian who didn't go to Edinburgh and didn't do like the, the normal route of comedians, which is that you go to Edinburgh Fringe, Fringe. and then you do this yeah. and you do that. Like he made his own work. And I, I love the way that he talks so openly if you hear him in interviews where he's like, I didn't have a spare 10 grand. Yeah, so I'm going to Edinburgh <laughs> Festival because that's how much it costs at least. Bloody you know, really? It's it costs cost so 10 grand to yeah. go to Fringe. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, we need, we need more diversity because it's not funded. You have to fund it all yourself. What? Oh shit! Yeah. But so people, people are, but people attending, they're paying you know, like proceeds and things, and yeah. But if you pay uh, a good couple of thousand pounds for your venue, your accommodation, yeah. your travel, your food when you're up there, your marketing costs, your PR costs, flyering, all your print marketing materials. Ten k, man. Wow. Yeah, that's that's before there you've you even kind of gone. Oh, let me treat myself to a nice dinner now and again, or yeah, whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's it's a lot of money and for and then people go, oh, oh, what? There needs to be more diversity. Why are there only uh, really posh white men doing it? It's like That's they can really afford it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> everyone else is going. Well, actually, I can't afford it, or I can't. Mm. I don't have that kind of generational wealth where yeah. I can say, oh, mummy, daddy, can you transfer me this much amount of money? And you want to follow my dreams. Yeah. You want to follow my dreams. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, can you imagine? So yeah. So <laughs> if that's the traditional route, what's the route that you took basically to get into comedy? Uh, I, I took a kind of mixture of both. My background's acting. I wasn't really interested in doing stand up. I loved watching stand up, but I wasn't really interested in it because I didn't really know how to do it or how people even did it, and it looked terrifying to me. And you know, yeah. I, mm. it is. It's terrifying. It, it looks. And. It. Um, it is, you know, it really is. I thought I'd be all right with it by now. I know I get nervous every time, but um, but yeah. So that was my background, and I also because I love theatre. Like my um, drama school training was really heavily theatre based as well, and I love mm. theatre. I love the buzz of live performance. I love the fact that you can come and see a show one day, and it'll be completely different yeah. vibe to the show that you're going to yeah, see the next yeah. day. And I think that's really beautiful. You have that shared experience that only you and the audience will know, and mm. it's not filmed. So it's just, it's so temporary. And, just and I think, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think that's really, <laughs> that's really nice, isn't it? Because no one mm. else is going to have that experience because it's not mm. captured anywhere. And, um, and it kind of acting work was thin on the ground. I ended up doing a workshop, which I thought was a writing workshop. It ended up being a stand-up workshop. I just did it because <laughs> it was free. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, obviously you think I'm joking. I was literally like, I was like, it's free. Yeah, of course I'm going to do it. Um, and then it, <laughs> Hardeep Singh Kohli was like there and he was like teaching stand-up and I was like oh shit like I, I don't know anything about this and you mm -hmm. know I know that there's a lot of like hardcore comedians who kind of look down on like workshops actors doing comedy yeah yeah really? and workshops they're like oh you can't learn it or they go oh but you're yeah. an actor you can't improvise you can't do this I mean I'm also going to say it works the other way around as somebody who's <laughs> a trained actor I look down on comedians who <laughs> they can act. The amount of times that I've just been on set or like in a room with comedians yeah. who are like trying to act, and I'm like, no, nah, mate, no, nah, mate, it's two years of drama school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a snob. Um, so yeah, and then that happened. And then I kind of just, I think a lot of it was like right place, right time, saying yes to mm. opportunities, even though they really scared me. Um, you know, Asian Network came along, and that was like a really big um you know stepping stone for me because it meant mm. tv and stuff like that and then from there it's just a bit of a kind of snowball effect really you know you kind of you know someone sees you do that and they do that and then you move up the ranks in terms of the agents that you've got in terms of the contacts that you get then as well yeah. um mm. yeah and it's kind of fed in really nicely with acting and it also meant that comedies meant that I now then got a book deal as well so it's all kind of like nice. because of comedy that I'm kind of I am where I am even though I really didn't want to do it in the first place <laughs> <laughs> and you're still feeling comfortable doing it which is uh, awesome yeah. man Constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I just I'm just I've kind of gone this is who I am I'm an anxious person 
you know, the reason I get worried about doing my shows because I want people to have a good care. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah cause you I care. Care because you you know, care. I care yeah, because, you know, there's nothing worse than kind of turning up to a show and then, you know, I've seen it so many times and the comedians start just a bit off or they're hungover or they're whatever or, mm. you know, they're not really on it or you can just tell that they're, you know, they're not, try- they're not doing their best. So my thing is, that's my priority is making sure that the audience have a good time. Otherwise, it just seems like bad manners, doesn't it? Always want to be accommodating, yeah, exactly. man. That, that's Desi's, isn't it? Yeah, I would, I would, I would do that. But you yeah, must exactly. have a good time, okay? You <laughs> better have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And also, you know what our people are like. If they don't like it, they'll tell you about it. They'll fucking tell you. Uh, yeah. Refund, refund, chai man. Yeah. <laughs> I only laughed 10 times. Five, man, yeah. <laughs> What's my laughs per minute, oh, man? Right. All right, let me think about this. <laughs> Conversion. Consider. And no, so, I mean, so, that sounds difficult, honestly. Respect to that, though. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Growing up, so, so like, you know, you obviously you talk a lot about mommy, daddy uh, in your shows and stuff. Like, what was the, how much did they have in terms of input in terms of this is where we think you should go with career? Did you have those kind of traditional pressures about lawyer, doctor, dentist, you know, the conventional accountant type things? Or were yeah. you kind of free spirited? Like, what was the, tell us about the interplay between family. So my parents are uh, Amrit Thadi, quite traditional in that sense. Uh, they oh. don't come from religious families, but they are. They okay. are. Okay. So okay. I was brought up as, you know, go to the Gurdwara quite a few times a week, learn Gita. That's why you're and Punjabi is so on point, man. Yeah. It makes sense <laughs> now, man. That's, uh, okay. But also, to give my parents their full credit, oh. um, my parents weren't allowed to have any kind of um, academic education. They both grew up in Bains, back in oh, Punjab. Wow. So when they were really young, my mum was like really academically gifted, but mm. her school only went up to year, like our equivalent of year five. And then oh, wow. Prim- my primary school. Yeah, 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 primary school. And her principal, like her head teacher, literally went to her house and begged my nana, like my papa, like her, mm. her dad, and was like, please, can you send her to secondary school? And like, I know it's a bus ride away and it's in the next town, but please, she's so, she gets all the answers. She's so clever, mm. you know, but, Mad. you know, she tells me the answer even before I quiz the question. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and my papa was just like, but why? He was like, I'm not doing that. He was like, you know, all the other girls, because my mum's like one of seven kids, you know, she's got like okay. four sisters. So they were yeah. like, you know, they've not really, he was like, no, he was like, no, no, no. He was like, you know, she can read and write fine. Like, because they That's were enough, like yeah. humble people. Yeah, they were like quite yeah, humble yeah. people. And they were like, you know, can she write a jikti? Can she read a jikti? Fine. He's like, that's fine, right? So she was kind mm. of coming up by that. My dad um, had even less schooling because he needed to help out at the farm, you know, yeah, yeah. do the kitty body and stuff. So they mm. both kind of came to this country, but they both decided, and actually, funnily enough, there was a study backing up what they did uh, recently. <laughs> but where basically, what they decided was, when we have a kid, we're going to only speak Punjabi to the child because they mm. were like, She'll, he or she will pick up English later. And so that's what they did to me. They only spoke Punjabi to me. And actually, about yeah. a couple of years ago, there was an article, I think, in The Observer or something that said mm. that if you want your child to be bilingual, the best thing to You've do is to speak talk to them in the other yeah, a hundred percent. And then yeah. don't speak English to them because they will pick that up. And I don't even remember like struggling with English, really. I don't think <laughs> I ever kind of, I don't remember it, even if I did. But um, the great thing is I'm fluent in Punjabi and I can read it and write it as well. So, so thanks, yeah. mum and dad. You're fluent in Punjabi, but you're fluent to the point you have so much control that when you're telling jokes in it, you're landing properly. And it, you can tell that, that there is a big difference. There's people who can speak, but it's kind of like stitched together Punjabi. Yeah, you know, yeah. like what we call tutti futi Punjabi. Yeah, and then there's me. like standing on a, yeah, that's indeed. <laughs> then there's a stand on a stage and deliver, which is like the jokes just land so much harder. It was so funny that show you kept you kept translating to me for the gore. You're like, yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. it means in English. And it's like, it's just not as funny some things in English. Yeah, it's, it's never that not. funny. It's, it's it, but funny. it's just not. It's just like, you know, yeah. Yukuti is, is really funny. Like, you, you're a bitch. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's one funny. of the things. But you have yeah. to, yeah. The, the, the ras in Punjabi is just something else. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's uh, something that I actually, I, I love using in my stand-up as well. And I talk about it in my show, as you know. But, like, I love using Punjabi in my stand-up because mm. it is who I am. And, you know, I was talking, I was on Paul Chowdhury's podcast recently and we mm. talked a lot about you know when I met him as well so we didn't we didn't I don't think we covered this in the podcast or it, it may have been edited out we talked a lot about Asian like South Asian comedians specifically who feel like they need to whitewash themselves in order to fit in they need to speak a certain way they need to code switch etc <laughs> yeah. etc and I totally yeah. get that we all code switch in real life we do it all the time you know yeah, and I get that <laughs> you the know voice. but I do <laughs> yeah the you voice. Voice. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, everything great yeah yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh. 
Like, have a nice day. If you're complaining or you're, you know, whatever, you're like, oh, hi, yeah, thank you. I just had a question about, you know, you're not going to be like, oh, I don't know, you need to be busy, you know, you know. Yeah, you're yeah. Oh, bastard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Literally that. that guy. Um, so we were talking a lot about it and I, because so much of my comedy is observational, it would feel wrong mm. for me not to use Punjabi in it because it's such a huge part of my identity. Yeah. It would, you know, just, like I said, it just wouldn't land as much. And when you kind of, you know, you sprinkle it in, yeah. I don't know, the level, like some, you land some of the jokes you're doing them and then you start laughing on stage, which makes it even funnier for us. You're laughing at your <laughs> own jokes <laughs> live. And it's just like, oh, wow. Yeah. That is really, really when funny. you see a comedian do that, it makes it more offensive yeah. because if they're just, if they're just yeah, 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 yeah. something and they're just spewing it out. They know like, when the laugh's going to oh, come or that you're yeah, waiting for it to yeah. land. That's different because you know what? Obviously, I know comedians, you know, they practice jokes and they try it smaller yeah. sets and they know it's going to land. We all know that. But yeah. then when you're actually enjoying it yourself and you can see that you're enjoying it, it just makes us enjoy it even more as well. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? When someone's enjoying something on stage, whatever they're doing, it makes you enjoy it so much more because you're like, oh, we're all in this together. There's no us and them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's... Until, until you call the gore out and you're like, until I call the gore out. Where are the white people? Now you know how it feels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But they love it, and there's always. They, know, they do love it. Yeah, they do love it. There was I did a show in uh, Bilston the other day, Wolverhampton, mm. and there was like just one Gordy <laughs> in the room, Kerry. Oh, it's okay. Just one guy. I love it. Yeah, just one. Yeah, just one. And I was like, all right, all right, right. Like, but you know, but I love that yeah. because there's, there's been a lot of white people that have come to my shows, or people from other backgrounds who've gone. I really get that because they might be working class or they might have also been born in the 80s yeah. or their parents also said you can't put the big light on or whatever. They're like, we might, we might not be from the same background, but I understand it. And specifically a lot of people from Jewish heritage, will come, mm. if, if they'll come and see it, they're like, oh my God, my mum also tells me to eat and yeah. then tells me to lose weight. You know, it's like, you know, we're all there. <laughs> it's that kind of migrant experience is quite similar, isn't it? Yeah. For a lot of the shared experiences are massively important to just be amongst people. I mean, it's, it's really good as a comedian mm. to have that not just a Punjabi audience, but to broaden, um, which yeah. kind of leads me to like the next thing I want to ask, which is how do you find it tempting to not always stick to brown jokes, like to mix it up a little yeah. bit, to make it applicable to everybody else? Because for, for me and Goran doing this podcast, it's tempting to always have, you know, the same people on all the time because it's like, it's loose mm. and you know what to do, but to step out of that mm. and get really out of your comfort to zone. To scale, become, scaling is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, and to not yeah. become generic, but to really utilize your full yeah. range of skills. How do you sort of do mm -hmm. that? It really depends on the audience, really yeah. depends on the audience. So if I know that I'm doing, say, like a mainstream, say if I'm doing like Comedy Store in London or whatever, I know that I'm not going to sprinkle in Punjabi in the way that I do it, say, for example, in Birmingham to like yeah, yeah. an audience that's 97% Punjabi. <laughs> so it's really just kind of like adapting to the audience. You know, I kind of, I do have two very different sets. You know, I have a oh. set that's like more Western. I have a set that's more Punjabi. Then I have like okay. a kind of in-between set. And it kind of, I'm lucky that now I'm, because I've got a bit of experience under my belt, I'm at the stage where I can go out and I can go, oh, okay, they're not, they might be Indian, mm. but you know, they're, they're not that busy. They're pretty Patel Co types. Coconut. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Patel <laughs> types. <laughs> she, said, she, she said this oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sorry, man. Don't you? Um, <laughs> you, know, you, you know when you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know your type. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so then you can, you kind of have to on the fly edit a little bit as, as you're going along. But yeah, mm. for TV and stuff, obviously you want to make it a bit more mm. mainstream if it's like BBC and stuff like that. But, but you know, the, like, you know, I was talking to Paul Chowdhury about it and he was like, you know, we were talking about the opportunities that we've got compared to, uh, you know, comedians who hide their heritage, whether knowingly or unknowingly, you know, don't talk about it. And that's fine. You don't always have to talk about where you're from. But mm. um, yeah, but it's, I think it's quite interesting uh, kind of what TV people want, especially mainstream TV people want yeah. and how you fit into that if you fit into that mm, into yeah narrative. Mm. i think there there is a massive difference there with like the type of person you're going to see on tv versus the type of person you see on in their own show in their element um, yeah for example, yeah the first person that did it who looked like us is russell peters and everyone yeah. saw that everyone found that flipping M mp4 video yeah. that went around with that little watermark on it we, we all saw it <laughs> and we all know who russell yeah. peters mm. is because of that and he sort of stepped down and just shared the brand experience and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. there's yeah. a template for people. If you want to follow it, you can go and do that. And in the you don't necessarily yeah. have to shy away from it. You can lean into it here and there. Just don't have everything yeah. around it because then it gets a bit niche. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And there's nothing wrong if you, if you want to be 
do you want to be say on the dissy comedy circuit which is kind of growing you know year yeah. by year if you you want to purely do dissy stuff or you know if you want to be mm. on the black circuit which is huge in this country you know of mm. course like go for it like I don't think everything has to be palatable for you know there was a guy we white, saw white one of your shows so, um, I think his name is Nabil Nabil yeah 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 so only this guy he's a color mm. I think he's like married into a Muslim family he speaks like Urdu mm. Punjabi oh, like mate, he has, right? he, Mate, he just stood there and he cussed everybody. There's one point in his set where he was just like, he spoke Punjabi, Urdu, Bengali, and he was just cutting everybody out one at a time. Plus, like, he's got the black appeal, he's got the brown appeal, he's got mm. every appeal, man. Yeah, like, he's like, with threat, man. He's, Dude, got, he's yeah. got everything on a CV you want in a man. By yeah. the <laughs> comedian, right? Every single, every single gender box, every single equality <laughs> box, tick, bam, 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 bam. He's like, yeah, perfect. He yeah. should be on every every uh, show yeah. everywhere across the globe. <laughs> right? Yeah. He's married Jesus to a Punjabi woman, so that's, that's it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's so what he said his insight yeah, into yeah. the culture is wicked. He speaks Punjabi. I remember, like, he knows a lot about like, like as well. Like, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah, doesn't yeah, sound yeah. like a god. He speaks better Punjabi than you, man. He doesn't sound good when he speaks oh, Punjabi. Mate, I saw him after the show, and he was like, bit, but "All right, yeah." He's like Sasika <laughs> Sadarji, and I was like, "Wow, I was like in a bit." Yeah. Um, yeah. So, based on that point you just said, then, so like Desi Circuit versus, like, let's say, like the O2 Arena, you know, or Hammersmith mm-hmm. Apollo, what's kind of your, what's the end game here? What is it that you want to do with comedy? I, I'll be honest, it's probably quite a boring answer, but it's the truthful one. Is that I don't have, I don't have a plan. Okay. Everything that I've planned, that I've gone, I really want that. I really want that. I get really attached to an outcome. Then that mm-hmm. thing will happen. And it will be a disappointment or that thing won't happen. And I'll be like, and but something better will come along. And mm. I just learned a couple of years ago to just go, you know what? Whatever comes my way is so much bigger than I dreamt anyway. Yeah. Mm. It's all good. Like there's, there's smaller things that I want to do. Like I want to write another book, you know, okay. um, you know, I'd want to carry on touring. I want to write, you know, write another one hour show to, you mm. know, maybe to tour in 2023, maybe um or 2024 or something like that but you know in terms of like oh the end game I think because there's no big break in the arts really I think people like to tell you oh yeah there's a big break you know and there's a Mm. I can't remember which famous actor it was and they were calling him an overnight success and he's like yeah I worked 10 years for it I worked 10 years a lot of people say that yeah like you only heard about it recently but I've been doing this for years yeah Exactly. Kevin Hart, you know. Kevin Hart said that. He said, I was 20 years I was a comedian, no one knew who I was. Now yeah. I'm really, really big and I've got all these films and shit, but I did yeah. for a long, long time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like Nabil, when like so Nabil went on Britain's Got Talent uh, a yeah. couple of years ago, but he was on the circuit for 10, 11 years. Yeah. Prior you know, and then he went on yeah, Britain's yeah. Got Talent, obviously went viral, you know, he's got all the followers, doing all the big stuff on TV all the time, et cetera, et cetera. And he's like, and people are like, oh my God, where have you come from? And he's like, busting my ass on the circuit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Going up and down the motorway, like not seeing my family, mm. not seeing my kids, like, you know, having doors slammed in my face and, you know, going into places and people going, oh, he's a black guy. Oh, he's obviously mm. not a comedian. He's obviously here. Mm. He's a driver or he's whatever. So he's like, I've had to deal with all that. And then people kind of only really want to know you when, when you're kind of at big. that level. Because, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it gives yeah. you... Oh, you've been on Brings of Talent. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because then they're like, oh, well, now you're legitimate, you know? It's all about blue tick, man. We need to get a blue tick. This guy, this guy contacted me from India, man. He said, "Give me a blue tick, one thousand rupees." I'm still considering his offer. So. Do it, man. Do it. I'll let, I'll let you know. Do you know what? I saved something for the podcast, so I'll share with you now. I was at the cinema yesterday. Okay, came straight from work. Went to watch Kingsman with the wife, kind of like semi date night type thing. Need the toilet, and uh, I walked into the women's bathroom. But I didn't realize when I came out, like I had finished my business. I walked in, I'll tell you the story. So I walked in, I've been to this, I haven't been to this toilet particularly that often, but I've been to this. He does this often. Lot. No, no, first time. So I walk in <laughs> and I see loads of cubicles, loads of cubicles. And I was like, this is a really nice toilet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's no urine. It was like all the privacy. I was like, and there was nobody there. That was the thing. It's not like I saw women and then carried on. Did you see didn't a little bin next to the toilet seat? No, 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 it wasn't that. No, no, that wasn't there. Went into the cubicle. This is when I got like, I was about to say aroused. It wasn't aroused. It's the wrong word. This is when I became shaka I got aroused in a toilet. Suspicious. Suspicious. Not aroused. Aroused, aroused, yeah, suspicious. It aroused your suspicions. And uh, yes, that would be okay to say. (laughs) There you go. There was a... um, uh, a panty liner wrapper on the floor. I know these because you know my wife has them. I was like, I reckon I was like, okay. Then I heard the sound of a lady 
taking her son to the toilet. But then that kind of confused me because sometimes if you're a young boy and you know your, your dad's not there, he may come into this toilet or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'm in the right place. Open the door. And there's quite a few women there now. I'm like, okay, well, I've done my business now. I can't like hide. So go and wash my hands. And then as I'm trying to leave, there's a little girl in my way. And then her mom has to say, oh, whatever her name was like, Lucy, Lucy, can you just let the man go or something? And I was just like, oh my God, this is so like embarrassing. So then I walk out and Shindy's there and I'm like, Shin's, um, just walked into the lady's toilet. I don't know why I did that. And she was like, yeah, I don't know why you did that as well. And uh, yeah, I just She probably the sat there, watched so, yeah. you walk in and said, I'll let him figure it out. <laughs> right? yeah. I'll let him figure it out. It's cool. Like yeah. it is what it is. There you go, man. Did yeah. you, uh, was there at one point where you like, I should apologize to these women like that yes. were queuing to go to the, was there a point where you were like, maybe so there acknowledge was, it? Uh, there was no queue. And Shindy asked me exactly center and did you apologize? I was like, nobody made eye contact. It was like I was invisible. Nobody mm-hmm. saw me. It felt like that. And obviously, had they been a bit like that kind of look, would have been like, oh, I'm very sorry. Obviously, didn't know I'm a bit thick in the head. You know, I've had a long day at work. I had all the excuses. Like bit that. thick in the head. I'm um, a doctor. <laughs> I'll see you yeah. in tomorrow. Right. Cover, 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 cover my jacket. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I often cross dress. And that, that's the funny thing as well. It's like, I don't even get away, man. I've got this mask on, but you got this big daddy that just like yeah. just comes out the bottom as well. I'm like, yeah. So, anyway, Mate, the amount of hair on your arms, you're not hiding me. anything, man, honestly. <laughs> no. Honestly, you know, absolutely, man. Absolutely, keeps you warm. Absolutely, man. So, Andy, what's next? Okay, all right. So, my my next question is, uh, what's your way of of writing jokes? So, do you tend to write it out? Mm. Do you sit there and write for hours? Do you have like a book that that you go around and do? Like, Goran's mentioned a few times to us in the podcast that when he met Just Rain, Rain. um, he had like Mm. a book of ideas. He just like write down a quick idea and say, "Yep, I'm going to work on that later." Something similar. Yeah. I just I just do it on my notes up because I get yeah. ideas that weird. T- do you know what I mean? I'm like I'm on a train or I'm whatever. I'm you know waiting to pay in a supermarket or something. I'm like Shh, write that down. So that's that, you know, and also because I forget things really quickly. So I'm like quick, yeah. quick, quick, write it down. So I've just got a notes up on my phone. That's ongoing. In terms of jokes, you try them out at smaller clubs or smaller spaces mm. or like mm. new material nights and stuff like that. And then you can just kind of develop them as you go along. <clears throat> um, uh and yeah and then you kind of it's terrible one of the most terrifying things about stand-up is if you fall on your ass <laughs> there's loads of people you're there fucking to watch no. you do it. <laughs> like yeah, nobody, exactly. laugh. nobody like, laughs yeah 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 but then, you, like, then, but then you get comedians who say, like kind of roll with them they're like well, that clearly wasn't funny and then that gets yeah. a laugh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's, and so that's, when you I mean, when you do a joke say you're doing a new joke yeah. and you don't know how it's going to be received mm-hmm. Obviously, your teams at the show, are they the ones who are looking to see how this received and that's a bit that kind of landed? Or are you doing that real time whilst you're I'm, delivering it? See, you're doing that. Yeah, you can yeah, feel it, that. man. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell. And also, um, if it's quite early on, so if it's like a work in progress show, for example, for Live Soaps, then um, it's recorded. Mm. Uh, it's just recorded for me to, like, either just an audio recording is fine or sometimes, you know, um, I film it just on my mm. phone just so I can watch it back and you know kind of pull it apart a little bit um for this show i had a director which was really really useful um i had a wicked director called Simon. yeah Simon for dose um working with like a british asian woman like a working class british asian woman was just a dream because i didn't have to explain (laughs) anything to her it's like yeah she gets it we're all (laughs) jewels. we're all like you know no one got plastic on our dining table chairs you know all this you know she and i there was because we were already friends her like be, coming on board she was just like yeah this 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 and this people will get it and I think some of my insecurities that I had about my material where I was like oh people are gonna understand it she's like yeah mm. they're gonna get it but there was a bit very specifically um which actually I've cut out the show now but I talk about going to the Gordwara um in like an earlier version of the show and um mm. and and I, and I was like oh maybe I should put like that that's a secret place of worship she's like no they should know that so why don't people know what a Gordwara is and I was like it was such a good point yeah. where she was like, be unapologetic about it. You know, she's like, if you know what, you know what a church is, you know what a mosque is, you know what a mandir is. That's true, is. you know. I temple. would have thought like, like shit, I, I need to contextualize it. Or I would have called it yeah, the same. temple or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So You're I was that guy in the... I was flat out refusing to call it the temple or the Sikh temple. Yeah, but yeah, I was yeah. like, God, God. And then I was like, oh, Sikh place. She was like, don't. She's like, it ruins the rhythm of it. They should know what a God, God is. And if they don't know, 
there's 1500 Punjabi people there that make you it up. Know. Like it, yeah. you will know. So it's fine. Mm. Um, so yeah, so it was really great to work with her. But like, you know, I'm kind of working on some new material now at the moment. That's mm. this is the bit where it's a bit like, oh, it's a bit edgy and are people going to like <laughs> it? And, mm. You know, and, and my way of doing it is I'll get the new material and I'll kind of sandwich it in between the stronger bits of material that I know are like, that they definitely work. Yeah. Mm. So you can then, kind of see if you can get a horse of... laugh or something or squeeze it out. Yeah. Or, or even just be like, <laughs> if it's yeah, crap, they won't notice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There is that as well. Yeah, definitely. Have you, you ever have any characters? Noticed... No, go on, go on, go on. Oh. Do you have any characters Nothing. that you do? Characters? You know, Paul will do like Sharon and Dave. Oh, oh, and all that uh, oh yeah. No, not really. I don't, because I talk about my mum a lot. So I guess that's just the observational. <laughs> Uh, side of things um i know i don't really have any characters per se how, how does mom feel about you talking about her? she <laughs> i think at the beginning i think i they came to see me do stand up and i was nice. really worried about this and i was like oh no i'm gonna have to write like a whole new 20 minutes because every i just talk about my mom so much i didn't realize yeah. <laughs> and then i was i had to like tone it down a bit because I, i'm i'm laughing with her right i'm laughing with her yeah. i don't yeah. punch down yeah. i'm not laughing at our people in any way shape or form it's all done with respect but also a bit of a joke and a laugh right but I was like but my mum might be a bit sensitive to me because you might be a bit like you know she might be <laughs> super, super heckler man yeah exactly <laughs> so I was a bit worried about that but actually uh, when she came I was like mm. oh Indian mums in general you know I kind of have to just like ah, brought it out <laughs> around a little yeah. bit so that she didn't feel like so singled out but yeah but when she leaves but she's supportive straight she up gets naming it, yeah. her yeah, 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 mum does this. That's it. Mum does this. Mum does this. Bam, bam, bam. That's it. She'll never know. Yeah. So comes <laughs> home. She's like, so do we do a joke? Banana di hai. Then a vyak ke mahon tu sasa bari pe joke karungi hai na? That's literally. That's literally it. And you know what? It's it's she's so typical. Like my my parents are so typical Punjabi. They didn't really support me until they realised other people supported me. And when they were like, oh, you know, Shindal down the road. Um, has been singing your praises to us, then they were like, "Yeah, now, now we're proud of you." <laughs> good, to, good to come. Wow. Know, good to come get them because because mm. people are like, you know, people are on your side, and it, oh, you know, we <laughs> like our people. You know, yes. they're so with you know, especially numbers. our parents' generation. Yeah, exactly. But they're also like, you know, I don't, you don't want to do anything that's too out of the box, and you want to, yeah. you know, know your place and all this. So when they were like, "Oh, other people are like her," then they're like, "Oh, well, she must be good." Then I was like, "Thanks." <laughs> well, like, that for like 10 years and you're like um yeah all right actually she didn't i i didn't tell them that i did comedy for a while so she was always mm. like why are you coming home so late <laughs> Date and, night. Um, yeah so no, they, I looking for a husband i couldn't i was like oh, okay. i'm <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> So I was always like making these excuses. And then I did the Asian network the first time in 2017. Mm. I didn't tell him. And I was like, very naively, I was like, it's on the red button. Like, you know, if it was going on on BBC One <laughs> prime button. time, it was on the red button. I was like, red button for one thing that like out of us here. Or, like, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. That. They're not yeah. going to see it. Yeah, well, my chachi saw it, didn't she? And my oh, chachi called my ma. Yeah. That side again. There you go. <laughs> Told you, Indy, what did I say? What did I say? Oh, and then she called my mom. Ma. She said, Could you the joke? Because I don't think I could be BC there since I did there. Because they see, I was like, Oh my God. And then my mom was like, Put the phone down. She said, I said, Jesus, jokes are not in the Oh man. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, okay, this is what I'm doing. And then they were like, You know, even a couple of years ago, my mom was like, Because she knew I wouldn't be a banker or an engineer or a lawyer. She was like, You teacher, you're not just here. Like, yeah, <laughs> good holiday, 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 yeah. holiday, holiday. Yeah, exactly. That's the main selling point about being a teacher. Yeah. Holiday, holiday, holiday. holiday. Fixed holiday. Yeah. Yeah. And the so thing is also because I worked in education like for years as well. But so, did you? so yeah, okay. so I worked um, as a learning support assistant for children with like you know speech and language disabilities, or like yeah. they worked in various schools doing all sorts of things like that. So then she was mm. like, Oh, this is great because you know. You know, you leave school at half three, four o'clock. The car, ah, blah, blah. Job you know, wow, the job Life on you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, we can have a bit of gossip. She can tell me who's died that week. You know, You know, so we can have like our whole gossipy stuff. Who was in this um, for this this week? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you. so I think she, but also like, come, like 
you know, they came over here with nothing. Do you know what I mean? Nothing, no mm. education, no, mm. no money behind them, no nothing. And, you know, they worked so hard for so many years to finally get to a stage where they kind of feel comfortable. But of course, their biggest wish for their children is going to be or for their child is going to be. We want you to be stable, secure, mm. looked after, you know, yeah. you know, and, and, and I think to them, it's obviously so alien because everybody in their world goes to work in the morning at the same place, comes home at night, gets paid monthly on this day, that's gets it. this amount of holiday. Security, and they're like, you know? okay, that's, that's safe. Yeah, that's, and that's so important when you're in survival mode, right? And mm. so, yeah, so I totally get it. I mean, now they're a bit more like, you know, because they've come to see me do stand up. If I say, oh, mom, I'm going to do a show. She's like, oh, I did that. I was like, yeah, like, like you saw it. Like, you just no, agree, no. like, yeah, same yeah, same. Same, same, like that. Same, same. But, but she's, <laughs> so she's, she's a bit more like, okay, because we've seen you. There's that fear, isn't yeah. it? That like your child is doing something and they might be, you know, it might not be respectful. <laughs> not very good. Not- well, well, not very good or like to, to, to go to the good temple. <laughs> but, but you know, you don't know. She she's thinking she's yeah, probably yeah. thinking, like, yeah, exactly. She's like, she doesn't know what I'm doing. As far mm-hmm. as you know, I could be, you know, she didn't even know when they first came to see me do stand up. She I was Welcome like, Welcome to Day to Life. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when she came to see me do stand up, she came with like uh, like in our hometown, so tons of Punjabis, like tons of Upper mm. there. I was like, wicked yeah. come there. You'll know the venue. Miller, because, Miller. Yeah, exactly. But they know the venue because they're like they go there for wedding receptions, isn't it? So they, right. so they were like, That's you it. know yeah, the yeah, venue. Yeah. Tunnel Badaya, Dad knows where to park the car. You know, Mum's got a new kutti yeah. on. Like you know, so it's a big occasion. Yeah. And um, you know, and even then, even when I said I was like, are you okay? Like you know, I sat them in their seats uh, in the auditorium. I said, you okay? Gosh, Jada, Barney, Gosh, Jada. And my mum just went, no, you can't. She went to work. Before you're about to go live. Before, huh? before, before you're about to go on stage in a Punjabi suit. But she, she said to me, she thought I was doing what a play. Merry kutti pala. So she was like, a costume, tere baad, bol, tere hor, I was like, right, you've no idea what oh, I need to man. do. And then I went and did it. it. And then I did it. Then she got it. And then since then, that's mm. been a turning point for sure. Because now that's they're good. like, we've seen it. It's fine. So like, so like so, yeah. fist, fist bump, no, respect, you know, respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they still not told me they're proud of me, but that's fine. I don't think that's ever going to happen. No parent ever did, um, man. <laughs> it's cool. It is what it is. There's yeah, always yeah, yeah. the next, there's a next thing, you know? Yeah, you know, so Amer- my dad's yeah, Doctor even my dad, good. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Can you can you can you degree? Can you degree? Yeah, do can you? There's always the next. Always, there's no end to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's never like a contentment with where you are. Like even my dad, like um a few weeks ago, my dad was like, "Do you know East Standard Chikamalala?" I was like, "Dad, I'm busy." Sorry, did you get out there? Yeah, I was like. <laughs> Listen, he's never seen his standards in his life. Yeah. So he he's never seen it. But he knows the Panasonic. But he knows, but, like, but, he knows, but he, no, but he knows East Standards yeah. is a big thing. Like he knows yeah, it's been yeah, on yeah, for years, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what it is. He doesn't know there's a Punjabi family and he doesn't know anything. He's like, oh, he's I was like, I was like, Dad, I was in East Standards a few years ago. Who's that mental I was like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you yeah, love it. Love it. And, and I was I was in it twice. Like, you know, I did it in two separate occasions. He was like, Acha, do you want to do it? Yeah, ask him again, ask him again. Oh, I was like, no, I was I was like all right, I, I send, it's all good. Yeah, I, I, I send him my CV, Dad. I love <laughs> what you need to do, so, yeah, but, is you need to put EastEnders yeah. on that series link on Sky Plus, yeah? And then the millions of episodes <laughs> will appear and it will go back like years. I've got stuff on my um, on my Skybox at home in Birmingham, yeah? Mum and dad have got this one random show from a girl channel just saved. And I'm like, what is this? And right. It's very important. I'm like, do you even know what this what is? is? I have no so idea. Cut, I don't know. I think it's just normal geek then. And mm-hmm. I'm like, mum, why is this so important? I think my friend appeared on it. I was like, you think? You don't even know. Oh. Stuff like that, right? And I'm like, that's She's the hack. Gonna it. That's it. The you hack. know that. Yeah, of course I'm not. He's never going to watch it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold them up. Punjabis, Punjabis are hoarders, man, whether it's digital yeah. hoarding or like physical yeah. hoarding. It's all about hoarding. But that definitely that point about this generation shift in terms of self-employed versus having a normal job. Yeah. yeah. So when I kind of transitioned a little bit away from medicine and started doing other things, I started working four days a week. Mm. And the, I used to take Mondays off. Monday was my business day, right, at the start. And when I do it, like literally, Monday morning, dad would see me. He'd just, just look at me. So my dad works in a prison. Okay, he's like prison mm. governor, works at home know. office. He's like proper, like fucking hard as nails in it, old school. Yeah. And um, he's like, do uh, 
I'm telling you, it's like nine o'clock on Monday. <laughs> That's like the standard. I said, Dad, we yeah. spoke about this. Like, you know, I'm doing this and the entrepreneurship, mm. and he's like, uh, to consultant in Ibarna, like it's the same thing. And again, okay, and that like, cause we had the conversations, and that's cool with it now. But I told Indy this. There was another Monday where I went to a pharmacy to pick up some dawai for somebody or whatever. And there's a person I know, like I work Punjabis, no Punjabis, and you know, you're in Birmingham now, so so Warsaw, you should definitely come to, right? Full of Punjabis, right? So there's this person we know, and he knows me, and I know him. He's looking at me, but he's not close enough to really like ask me like a you know intimate question. And he said like he's there Monday, looking at his watch, looking at me. He's like, yeah. I, just, I was like, I'm gonna like, say, who are you, mate? Could be my day off, could be my holiday. But to them, it's like, yeah, you need to work. काम करना ओके सेवेंटी तक काम करियो फिर टाइम करियो एंड देन फॉर दैट्स इट यू नो लाइफ होगी तो दैट्स इट दैट्स इट यू स्पेशली एन्जॉय दैट लिटिल पीरियड ऑफ लाइफ एट द एंड है ना या तो सारे पैसे बन गए या एग्जैक्टली या फाइव इयर्स वेयर योर नीज आर गॉन योर बैक्स गॉन एवरीथिंग इज गॉन या योर आईज गॉन योर नोज गॉन एवरीथिंग यू गॉट या एब्सोल्युटली या एंड देन यू लाइक आई एन्जॉय इट ऑल माय डैड व्हेन ही रिटायर्ड was mm. like 65 or 66 when he retired he's been working since he was 16 doing manual jobs doing proper manual right. labor right yeah, yeah. this guy oh. has never taken a holiday in his life for longer than like a couple of weeks right i know where mm. i get it from and um <laughs> so yeah. he was like i was like dad you retire i was like you know what are you going to do with yourself and he was just like i had no idea he was like i don't know what to do with myself and like for about yeah. the first kind of month you know I'd, he would just be moping around the house and it would be like One o'clock or something. He was like, "Hona mera kamate roti ka time hunda si." I'll be like three o'clock, and he'd be like, "Hona mera kamate cha pinta hunda si." Like you know, it's just <laughs> reminiscing. Yeah, it's like, reminiscing about work. It's like it's so yeah. indoctrinated, and it took him like a good six months to go. Okay, let me get more involved in the god god. Let me get more yeah. involved in this. Let oh, me go to politics. Classes. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Always. Committee. Always. Committee. Stage, yeah. Like That's it, man. <laughs> My mom, my mom was hilarious. You know, like how my mom was like, "Was he at the jana?" Like she would literally be like trying to get him out of oh, the house. Because my mom's got space, a routine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even that. She's like, yes, yeah, she's over. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, not she don't even like other people. This is what I love about my mom. She's like, <laughs> like she doesn't. <laughs> she's so said, hard no, the mom, the mom line is kissing any jana end of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is like this is the key line. <laughs> you dial on India. It's like kissing any jana there now. Friend, That's friend a rough line, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. That's what. That's what. Kalle, 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 k Mm-hmm. Drink some chai, eat some biscuits, watch Seek Channel, fall asleep in front of the Seek Channel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Monday she goes to yoga. Oh, uh, oh, wait, wait, give us yeah, no, 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 you heard about the guy, Sukh? Bikram? Yeah, yeah, I know the guy. The scandal. Yeah. So it's basically, yeah, yeah, this guy's a mass Indy, rapist. Indy, 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 womanizer. He thinks I look like him. Mm-hmm. Indy in a black speedo kacha does that weird Ram Ram Dev Ram Dev did thing. He can do it as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, Indy, yeah. you just you're you're that guy. Okay. Do you know what? He's I, doing. He's doing it now. <laughs> yeah, I can see look. it. He's got the look. You can see it. I yeah, can yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my dad was on it, man. He's like, "This will, this will cure your eczema if you just sit there yeah. and do this whole, yeah. right? You'll be yeah. fine." I was like, "Oh my god!" My mom does that all like the this, time. Cover like this, must be like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom's always like this. Anytime I'm like, oh, I feel a bit like, "Do lo me lo me god, lo me lo me god." I was like, "What are you? No, anji badam khaniya, anji badam." Yeah, that's it. Haldi piniya, vixalala. Yeah, and yeah, they're all these standards. Yeah, everything. Jaban, jaban, jaban. If I if I'm like oh mum oh I feel a bit I'm a bit stiff or whatever do sound to be like I was like no that's not no I'm not going to do mom. that yeah. uh, oh no <laughs> the day the day when uh, we say it and uh, your mum was like tu pegalala that will be the day man <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> can you imagine ah do I'm in a heart look up pegalala tu patiala pegalala I think I would keel over if my mum said that to me I would actually die I'm sure yeah, right. give, give him that the amrita di that that be so it's not going to happen it's not going to be amrita di yeah let's yeah. understand it I'm so I mean that the amrita di means baptized guys so, yeah. it means baptized huh? which means ain't no alcohol no meat, nothing like yeah. that's it yeah 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 
Yeah. The testing yeah. unit. That, that's what they'll say. Yeah. Us, us yeah. Ni pee sakde, but tu zahar pee la. Chala pee la. Yeah. Pee la. Marja hona. Pee la hona. Marja. Oh, um, man. <laughs> so I need to bring it back to comedy a little bit. What's the yeah, worst on, experience sorry. you've had on stage of like a bit not going well, essentially, as comedians like to call it, bombing? Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but I've not really bombed that badly. Really? That's all right then. I've not, yeah, I've not yeah, died on stage. Cause I mean, there, were, there were times on stage when I did Edinburgh Fringe where I only had four people in the audience. Wow. That's all right. And then yeah. you but and then you have to go, yeah. But then that's 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 when you have a choice. You have a yeah. choice to go, either I let this scare me or I or I address the elephant in the room. And I went out and I was like, oh, there's only four people. That's like that's how many people like you know I grew up sleeping in my room with. Do you know what I mean? Like you kind of just make a joke about it. Joke and you yeah, just yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. you go, you go with it. And you know, ever since I did that. The one good thing about doing Edinburgh Fringe where you perform your show every single day for a month, it'd be with one day off. Um, <laughs> it's that afterwards you feel bulletproof. You're like, mate, I was performing in a leaky venue. I'm 10 grand down. And there were four <laughs> people in my show one. And, you know, I worked my ticket off for a month. It's like, oh, yeah, you want me to go and do a gig in front of some shitty brown Tories in Hounslow? Yeah, I'll fucking do it. Like, this, <laughs> like what are you, you going to do? What are you going to do? I've already, like, you know, yeah. face <laughs> face my worst fears um so yeah I met um I actually met Eddie Izzard a few years ago did a film um that mm. he was doing and um I just started doing stand-up and someone was like oh sick to stand up and I was like oh, it's Eddie Izzard what are you, what are you standing for I was gonna tell yeah, him I've only done relax, like man. I'd only done like do you know what I mean I was like I've done three gigs this guy's like my comedy like one of my comedy idols and he mm. was just like oh how many gigs I was like, I've only done a few he was like have you died on stage yet I was like no he said you can't call yourself a comedian until you die on stage so maybe I'm not until- a comedian Mm. <laughs> just an imposter you're not an imposter you're fine, the funny thing she said the whole podcast <laughs> Oi, the real yeah? suck. that's mean the, the real <laughs> suck man <laughs> no, so, who, so who in the industry for you is like yeah man or woman like mm. who, who are the people that you look up to who's and the goat these are the people in your opinion. i aspire or they or inspire me uh, that's the question who is the goat, who's yeah. the goat? i think that there's lots of people that inspire me yeah, in see, Kala, anyone yeah i think um Richard, yeah, i'm yeah, yeah. a lot of the uh, big fan of mo's because mo gilligan just because he's done so much of it on its own on his own yeah. uh mm. he's created such incredible content it was just brilliant and he's really you know, he's get you know, he's really paying off for him. And I'm like, wicked, I'm glad. Because I know that he was going on the circuit for a long time before yeah. it got to this stage. Um, uh, Peter Kay, because I grew up watching Peter Kay, okay. loved him. And I was like, I know he's a white guy from the North that like you think, <laughs> oh, what am I going to have in common? But the working class experience in the UK mm, is so like similar. Universal. You know, yeah, so yeah. it's like you just, like, you get it, right? You get it. It's like, oh, the, the kids sliding across the dance floor at a reception. It's like, yeah, that's the weddings that we went to. <laughs> like, you know, you know, the being, the being too full, but then having to ask for the dessert menu or like, you know, your dad being like, oh, what's this you're making? It's like, yeah, I just got it. You know, wet playtime. You know, all of that stuff. Mm. It's like, mm. like can really relate to all of that um sarah millican because sarah millican is probably one of the first like female comedians that i saw that i was like oh my god she's so funny she's still really observational really funny but like looks really mm. sweet and then just comes up with some like real filth and i was yeah, like yeah she just man you know, i was like yo hang on yeah it's all like yeah, no, but, <laughs> yeah exactly you know because you think oh she's there she's in a nice little you know floral dress or whatever you're like oh you know with a little cardigan on you think oh maybe but then I love that she's very relatable as well and she's very kind of unapologetic mm. about who she is and a great supporter of like um comedians as well so she did during lockdown the first lockdown she did zoom gigs called um, playground and she actually messaged me mm. going do you want to do it and oh my god I still can't I was like I'm gonna save this forever like I screenshot her DM <laughs> Sarah Millican's DMing me. I was of like, course. oh my God. And um, Bonjour, but yeah, and I was I just couldn't believe it. She was so lovely and so encouraging and to all the comedians. And you know what? Her and so her husband's Gary Delaney, he's also a comedian. And um they didn't take any money for themselves. They just gave it all to us comedians. Nice. And they purely did it out there. You know, there's like people don't do that. Rob Beckett, I worked with on the Jonathan Ross comedy show. Um mm he donated his fee and we split it amongst the other acts that were on the same show that That's he nice, was. Man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we all got like, you know, so you kind of just think, mm. man, like, you know, 
there are a lot of wrong ones, like in the, you know, in the entertainment industry, industry, especially, but these guys are brilliant. When I met Paul Chowdhury, I met him when I did um, a show mm. on ITV called Sorry, I Didn't Know. And that's when we met and I had met him and I was full on like, oh my God, the guy that like, you know, I've been watching him for years and like yeah, on YouTube yeah. and stuff. Oh my God, it's him. And, um, uh, and I was like, oh my God, Paul, I know, I feel like I know you. He was like, I feel like I know mm. you. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I've been following your career for the past couple of years. I was like, oh my God, wow. are you kidding me? Paul Chow just been that's a my big career. compliment. But he, yeah, exactly. But he was so open and humble and honest about like mm. his experiences and about, he was like, get, blah, 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 you know, get this contact, go and do this. You know, like he was really kind of um, encouraging in that way. And then he had me on his podcast as well. And I think, you know, those people, you like, you might see Paul on stage and you might go, oh, he's, you know, oh, he's a bit of a whatever, you know, maybe he's a bit aggressive or he's a bit, but you know, no stick, nonsense, though, isn't it? That's exactly- but that's exactly what it is. But yeah, I yeah, like, yeah. we, you know, I, he was just so honest and empathetic and everything with me. So like him definitely as well. Um, yeah, I guess like also Robin Williams, like old Robin Williams, oh, when ooh, he okay, would like, nice you know, shout. do his, yeah. So mm. just like the character stuff, the quickness, the, you know, but again, he also had that altruistic side where um, mm. when he would go and do his tour shows, you know about this, right? When he would go and do his mm. tour shows that he would offer jobs to like the local homeless community. Oh, did he? Wow. Um, yeah. So when he would be in a different city, he would say, I'd want them working on the show. And you just think, like, you don't have to do any of this. You all, like, got you know, everything that you need. Like, you not, made you it. Don't yeah, need, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you made it. You don't need to do this for any sort of um, praise or anything like that. So, yeah. yeah so him, him also, I think, massive, like, such a quick wit, just so clever, so one of a kind. And, you know, mm. I always used to watch him and think, oh, my God, he's so quick. Imagine how quick his brain's working. Yeah, like, because his mouth be, yeah, is working yeah, yeah, so yeah. quick. His, his brain must just be incredible. So, yeah, I just really admired him for that as well and Eddie Izzard as well like saw him do a work mm. in progress a couple of years before um the pandemic started and he was just like just incredible and it was a work in progress like mm. you know what I mean you expect it to be it's not even finished material shaky yeah. no 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 I was on the floor laughing <laughs> like mm. just so clever just some people are so naturally funny aren't they they don't even yeah. have to do anything it can just be like delivery or something yeah, or just yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah. how they, you are and you're wetting yourself and yeah man so <laughs> I, I guess like those are my and there's loads of like other comedians that like are on the circuit like so Nabil who you mentioned massive yeah. fan of his what he's doing is incredible actually his director the same director um Simon is the one yeah. who directed Live Sucks as well so for his tour show um mm. you know yeah really I think he's like fantastic as well so yeah and Anuvab Bal, who I, we mentioned, like, um, off air, huge mm. fan of his as well. Um, Indian comedian um, from Mumbai, Mumbai, whatever we're calling it Mumbai. these days. Mumbai. Um, <laughs> Mumbai. Yeah, so, yeah, there's, there's, there's loads. There's, there's so many great comedians. There's so many more up-and-coming comedians as well. Mm. Uh, Do I'm you find now. yourself... Two questions for me, and then, Indiana, you want to jump in. Do you... Will you still go to shows? Like, will you go to other comedian shows? That's show number, that's question number one. And second yeah. question is, so you're obviously making it, right? You're in that progress, in that journey, you're smashing it. The next generation, mm. do you so see yourself as like a mentor? Are there people you're trying to pull up and pull through? And you can answer it whichever order you want. Yeah. Uh, well, like, do I go see other shows? Um, I find it quite difficult to go and watch comedy because to me, it's a busman's holiday. To me, I'm just mm. sitting there going... You know, and I'm going, oh, how did they do that? But you know when you're a bit like, oh, that's yeah. me did that joke. Yeah. That together there. And you did that there. And you can learn a lot from watching other comedians. So I always watch other comedians when they're on stage. But that's such a fun kind of you. Kind of and it's like, ah. Yeah, yeah, crap. yeah. You can't yeah, just enjoy so it. I can't just sit back you're and analyzing. enjoy it. No, I can't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm. And mm. I think if it was like a solo show, then it would be different. Like if it's a solo okay. show, then you've got an hour of like some, maybe someone I know or someone I'm a fan of, then like, yeah, sure. But like going to see like a mixed bill show, if someone was like, oh, do you want to go see comedy? Or like my friend came up for New Year's mm. and she was like, oh, why don't we watch a stand up special on Netflix? I was like, I cannot think of anything worse. Because I'm going to be <laughs> I'm going to be sitting there going, how did they do that? How did they? Yeah. Okay, maybe I, need to, I just maybe I need to think about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like just kind of pulling it apart. So it, it's not really that enjoyable for me, sadly. Um uh mentor yeah do you know what I would genuinely love to be in a position where I can offer financial support to other working class people of color 
like me whether they want to go to drama school whether they you know want to do some sort of course in the arts or whatever I know firsthand how difficult it can be like I know obviously I joke about it and like yeah my parents are fine about it now but for literally from the ages of 18 to 36 me and my parents were at loggerheads do you know what I mean it was tough you know we had to really work through that and I had to be really stubborn and you have to deal with the guilt of all of that you know that first generation mm. guilt where you're like oh you know look at what they've done and what are you, you doing get stable. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> risk. yeah exactly and it you know there's a lot that goes on there and then obviously having to financially support yourself I don't come from money so having to financially support yourself and you're watching other people you know there's so many like even even up until recently I would always look at these other comedians and go oh my god we came up at the same time and they've done so much more than I have and then I talked to my other friend and she was like you know they don't have to have a day job you know, they've never had a day job in their life. You know, they can spend 24 hours working on this and their rent mm, is paid by their parents. No wonder they're their house is paid for by their parents. Mm. And I'm like, oh, of course, because you're not going, oh, no, I don't really want to do that gig, but I should take it because it's 200 quid and that 200 quid yeah. is going to pay, that's going to cover my council. You know, and so you're not doing that kind of like mental juggling the whole time. So I'd love to be in a position where I could um, sponsor at least or like pay the fees for at least one a uh, person from like an underprivileged background to go to drum school per year like whatever that looks like nice. I would love to do that um I would love to kind of yeah I mean I don't think I'm at the mentor stage yet because I'm very new to the game myself but at some point I would love to be able to just go hold some mentoring sessions completely free of charge to people who just want some advice um and you know and, and yeah because I think yeah. Yeah. And I think Mm. also because it's what I wish I'd had as well. Like, you know, I wish somebody had sat down and said to me, like, actually, you don't need to follow this route. You can do this. Why why do you think about this? And instead, you kind of do it by trial and error. And, you know, Mm. I'm so passionate about uh, representation, you know, South Asian representation um, on TV, on stage and media in general. And there's so many barriers to it. So many barriers to it. Um, You know, especially if you come from a similar background to mine. And I think you can make that even slightly easier, then I think you should do it, you know. And I think, you know, a lot of people still have that mentality of, well, I've made it, I'm pulling the ladder up behind me. Yeah. Um, and really, you I should be that, pulling man. people up. Like, you know, I was talking to, um, yeah. And, and I know a lot of people do it that because they think that there's only uh, a limited amount that? of space. Like, you know, there's oh, only, the space because they think it's like a pie. Do you know what I mean? They mm. think it's like a pie that you have like your your sections of it and that's it. And then there's not going to be enough pie. There's tons of pie. Like, you know, there's, 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 there's I'll make a fucking second everyone. pie, all right? Yeah, yeah exactly. I said, I will make you 15 miles. Let's Let's play. But also... It's all a baking carne. 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 Punjabi on the knee, we're going to Sook's next show. You're getting roasted. I just got flashbacks. I just got flashbacks in my nanny. Just giving me a bollocking, <laughs> man, like, honestly. <laughs> yeah, just just so you know, maybe book in a therapy session the day after the show. There 100%. might be some stuff that comes up for you. If you. You might get slightly triggered. But but yeah, like, um, you know, I think it's really easy for us to complain, isn't it, as audiences and go, oh, I wish there were more people like me on there. But it's like, well, what are you doing? Are you going to mm-hmm. live comedy shows to support, support them? Because that's how comedians come up, up, right? You know, right. Right. and so if you're, if you're genuinely passionate about it, put your money where your mouth is, you know. Um, you know, pre-order their books, do this, do that, you know, go see their shows, interact with them on Twitter. Because all of that stuff really helps, right? Because unfortunately, yeah. I know it's 2022, but we still have to prove ourselves, right? And I still feel like if you look mm. like us, you still need to go, I need to work 10 times as hard to be taken seriously. And I think the only way that, we, that we're going to be able to accelerate that process is if we as a community all kind of band together and support our own. Yeah. So you kind of mentioned that a few times yeah. in the podcast. Have you mm. encountered any like obstacles in, in the comedic world? Because from the outside, it looks like a bit of a tight knit circuit, but I'm not sure if that's been the same experience for you. Uh, I struggle. I'll be honest. I struggle with, with being in quite a male dominated industry. I struggle yeah. with, you know, something where women are still seen as like niche, <clears throat> you know, mm. all, all, all female lineups are still seen as niche. You know, I always right. joke that the only time I'm on a lineup with other women is when it's international women's day, like, you know, Bucky, <laughs> Like, you know, the rest of the year, they're like, sod you. Um, and there's something really interesting in that, that I was talking to a, a fellow, like, female comedian about, you know, we were talking about the fact that the fe- the male comedians that we know, they're really, like, they're all really tight. They're all like, you know, they've got their little cliques and stuff. And yeah. we were like, why don't we have mm. that as much with women? And I was like, I wonder if it's because there's only generally one woman on a lineup, whereas mm. the men see each other all the time. They get to do a show together. They can socialize. They can go, oh, let's meet up for a drink. Let's go for some food, whatever. Yeah. Their friendships are formed like that. 
because there's only one woman generally on a lineup, maybe two if you're lucky, we're still kind of perpetuating that myth of like, oh, all women are in competition with each other, you know, so there's like less of a sisterhood and more of a kind of, you know, it, it is changing and there are kind of, you know, parts of the comedy community which are a bit more welcoming and in- inclusive and stuff. But, you know, there's no getting away from the fact that, you know, there are so many all white lineups, there are so, so many all male lineups, women are still seen as not funny, you know, still niche, <laughs> we're not mainstream, people, Mock the Week will still get you know Gary or Alan from wherever like you know complaining going oh why have you got women on we all know women aren't funny it's still such a part of Mm. like our kind of psyche isn't it that you know women can't do this job so I think you know I'm really lucky that I've not had any kind of overtly horrible experiences Mm -hmm. but I've be I've witnessed them and I've seen them and I know that friends very close friends of mine who are comedians have you know the comedy industry it's not regulated in any way we don't have a union in that way we don't have a hr <laughs> that we can go to we can't be like you know so then you kind of have to be your own hr you're, you know, you kind of you're your own be, person yeah exactly yeah yeah, but <laughs> but this like, yeah exactly you can't even do that like you know it's like so that's why when women when i meet female comedians and i always say to them always ask another woman how, how much you should get paid because otherwise you're going to be undervalued yes yes and important. i said and like always that. check always check from a safety perspective if you don't know the promoter or you don't know the comedians on the lineup we do it kind of informally anyway where we're like I'm doing this lineup you know no he's a creep no he's this stay away but and it's from a safety and it's shit that we have to do that right yeah. it's oh, shit that we yeah. have to we have to then go I potentially have to reduce my income because then I'm going to be working with someone who's essentially a rapist on a stage or who's essentially done horrific thing. ahead of time and they warn you do agents play a part in that as well as like stopping that or is it mainly like you have to I, ask other people? I don't really gig with other many other Asian women. I'm okay. generally the only woman on a bill. So like that show that you're coming mm. to in Sutton, like I'm the only woman on that bill. And um, just women in general, we kind of go careful of so-and-so, careful of blah, 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 you know, mm. and you kind of, and that's the kind of unwritten rule that you have to do. That's the kind of the extra burden and the labor that you have to do as a woman is to go be careful this has happened, that's happened, that person's done this. And there are so many horror stories that you can see on the internet or you speak to any comedian, they'll tell you like, you know, it's, no. and a lot of women have left comedy because of it, because yeah. they've had terrible experiences with promoters or comedians. And then they've complained to a promoter who's just like, gone. Well, I don't care. Like I wasn't there. I don't know who's going to believe you. This sounds, you like, know, this sounds just Harvey like Weinstein. The, uh, yeah. yeah. It's but me also, too. It's the comedy me too. Yeah. Yeah. Touching on one of our first oh, guests okay. who was called Sook, he's my brother-in-law. He works in the mm. in in the art space as well, but as a producer, Goran, he said the same thing, which is like there's so many talented people that left prior mm. to him because yeah. they didn't want to take the shit and they were being treated badly. He said he was just the one that was dumb yeah. enough to hang around, and he said, but mm. he made it high up. But he said I had to go through a lot of shit to get there, and he said yeah, there is talent absolutely. out there, but but people don't want to they don't want to encounter the higher obstacles that they have to compared to say somebody else of a different mm. nature. Or somebody else of like mm-hmm. a different upbringing. Yeah. Recently, um, have you guys both seen the recent the new Bond film? Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. Whoever the actress is, she plays. I can't remember her name. I think it's something Harris who plays uh, Money Penny. Naomi. Uh, yeah. 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 So she she put something out where she said something. I think it was the, the reading for one of the first Bond films she was in. Didn't name any names, but she said like loads of men in the room. A director was there. Someone else was someone was there. And this actor just. Just stroked a laughter, stroked a yeah. leg, put a hand like up a thing, and she's like, yeah. no one protested. And I was, I was reading this, I was like, bloody hell, man, this is like the highest level. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. you presume there's like loads of integrity. No. Like, okay, you know, local level, you think, oh, and people might get away with it because whatever, whatever. But bloody hell, man, that was, and this is like recent. Yeah. I was just yeah. so shocked. I was like, that's just disgusting. Man. Yeah. Like, it happens. It happens man. all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's also it happens all the time. And if you protest, then it's like, oh, why are you being so sensitive? Oh, but but actors are just handsy. Actors are just tactile. You know. So <laughs> and, I, and I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people will always gaslight women. You know, people always kind of, and other women will gaslight women. Oh, don't don't do that. Oh, he's just like that. Don't worry, yeah. older women, older women will do it a lot. Yeah. Oh, just shut up and just get the job. Anything to get yeah, the job, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Wow. So it's like, and if it's something that you really want, it's like, then you have to kind of weigh up. Like, <clears throat> well, hold on. Like, Is it worth what? it? Yeah, is it worth it? Like, what what would this mean? So yeah, it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, comedy also 
has its kind of moment of outing like these predators that are still on the circuit out there and that are still on tours and doing oh, making loads sure. of money and yeah 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 they're you know they're out there and we it's an open secret but obviously you can't name names and you can't talk about them because they have super fancy legal teams they have you know all the money that they're going to throw so there's loads of women mm. out there who've been silenced and there's, that's why a lot of women move away from the circuit and then go, let me do TV or let me do my make my own yeah, stuff because safer. it's safer. I'm more in yeah, control. Protected. I'm producing my own mm. stuff. I'm not, I'm not then in a strange city, you know, with with someone who might, you know, then take advantage of me or might then yeah, assault me yeah. in any way. So, um, so yeah, it, it's dark. It's it's really dark. That's, and it, it kind of, that is worrying, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It needs and to be I, talked about more for sure. But on that note, I've seen sort of the you've been in the gym, man deadlifting heavyweights man ah yeah she's, man. She's, Get right. she's, she's like she's like no one messing with me man she's like you come to me man <laughs> <laughs> mate, get that jutti ready, man. That Punjabi jutti hits yeah. me. Hey, always, I'm always, mm-hmm. always, always, always. Yeah, man. I love the gym. I love the um. Just love the the. My dad is hilarious with me going to the gym. Go on. Um, because I've only just got back into it, and um, I'm really enjoying our PT. I'm really enjoying working on my strength and my form and stuff. And nice. my dad, I saw, I showed him a video of me um, doing deadlifts, and he was like, "Cha cha, he's a kinnapari." I was like, "Cha cha, cha cha, tu tu is a cha, tu belt la la hon, tu belt." I was like, "Dad, this is like this is like fifty kilos." I was like, "I don't need a belt." He's like, "Get that edge in early, tu belt la." Now, the professional yeah. weightlifting. Yeah. <laughs> That's something like a Mary Curie Olympic record card. <laughs> Do you know what? And my mom. <laughs> When I first started doing um, powerlifting and stuff, my mum yeah. was like, I was like, you know, I would go to the gym. And I was living with them at the time. And I come home, she's like, Kiki Taja, I was a teller. I was like, and she switches off because she thinks obviously gym is aerobics and, you know, not up a general, you know, she's like, you're just running on a treadmill or whatever. And um, and I, I was like, oh, you do this, that and the other. And she must have just heard the word like weights or something like that. And right. she just went really quiet. And then about three days later, because my mum does this thing, she'll go really quiet. And about three days later, you you'll be doing it. something complete. Yes, yeah, think about it. You'd be something completely unrelated, like, I don't know, cutting up some garilli or something like, you know, doing your, like, yeah. you know, peeling some onions or something like that. And she just went really quiet. She went, um, tu hona, un, nikki, nikki tu hon telli ta jana ya. I was like, what? He jumps from here to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, "Jodiya, ho nikna diya nikra pa ke telli te jaan dena ita kar dena sport kar dena." I was like, "I'm not going to be a professional weightlifter, but her thing wasn't about me being like she might be too muscly or masculine in her eyes." She's like, "She was, yeah." She was like, "Jaan dena kapre pa." She thought I was going to go on leggings covering the ankles and everything. Let's go. Yeah, everything, everything. She was really bad. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah,
that's what my sister says to her kids like if their kids is maleka says oh should i cut it off they're like no don't cut it off and Mate, then like that, that's oh, abuse that's is abuse it, man that's is it hurting that's anymore that's and they're like no it's like yeah. okay boss I'm like, oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's some old school parenting and i'm here it works it. man it works <laughs> Oh, should it's I put it on? Oh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Hearing them say no. <laughs> oh, my God, man. The kid's voice, man. Oh, this is a great podcast, man. I think it's time to wrap it up because yeah, uh, Garen's so got a lot of We've probably gone away off piece, haven't we? Sorry. No, we haven't. I heard from a birdie. Go I heard from a birdie, Sook. So a lot of you said, you know, you always talk about um, being single, but you're happily <laughs> single. But I heard from a birdie that you're going into 2022, not single. Tell us the goss. Ah! Um, so you, can't, you can't put this in the podcast, but I'll tell you. Oh, okay, hang on. So oh, I can tell you off air. We can, can talk about that off air. That's good, fine. Too good, too good, too good. For those of you that aren't privy to that conversation, Soz. Huh? For those of you that aren't privy to that conversation, Soz. You can be like, join our Patreon, 17 pounds a month. For the gossip. Exclusive um, but it is that. an exciting year because uh, I'm going to be on TV. But yeah. I can't tell you what it is, but in the springtime, Fine. watch me. I'll, I'll, I'll on my Instagram. You'll come up, and my book's coming out uh, in March. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So yeah, pre-order that in it. Um, well, tell us. Tell us the name of the book. It's called Sunny, and it's about yeah, Sunny. Yeah, yeah. As in also like the name and also the weather. But uh, it. yeah, so the the main character is called Sunny. Protagonist is called Sunny. She's a British Punjabi Sikh woman um, in her thirties who's realised that she's not where she wants to be in life. And what do you do about it? And her mum's like, get married. And her dad is, you know, just reading the Punjab Times. And uh, <laughs> like, you know, all her friends are like moving on and like all grown up and stuff. And she's like, oh man, what am I doing with my life? And she's trying to date. But it's all on the down low. And basically it's our British Asian experience. But that like in modern familiar. day, there's, yeah, exactly. There's no, I promise you, there's no arranged marriages. There's no honour killings. There's no this. There's <laughs> no forced killings. marriages. There's no, you know, like all the narrative that you get when there's no terrorism. There's not, you know, none of that, um, yeah. which you normally get with any sort of like most brown stories. But it's just a, you know, it's a woman, British Asian, working class, down to earth. It's about her journey with dating, with mental health, with living a double life, with how do you deal with the fact that you're not where you want to be in life and you're 30 and everybody else has got like mortgages and kids and, you know. That's nice dolly and stuff like that. Where's so, yeah. the best place to buy it from? I know people have like, uh, where they want to buy things from. Yeah, I mean, I always say, you know, support your independent bookshops if you can. Yeah. You know, there's a website, I think it's called Hive with two eyes, um, where you can kind of like request it so that it comes to your independent bookshop. Yeah. Um, it's on all the usual places, Foils, Waterstones, Amazon, mm -hmm. Smiths, wherever you buy your bookshops, really, uh, wherever you buy your books buy normally, your but it's also going to be an audio book, all your bookshops. Buy all your bookshops. Um, <laughs> where uh, it's also going to be an audiobook and an ebook as well. If you're like you want it for Kindle, so okay. And cool. I'm going to be doing the audiobook, so you can hear me doing all the voices. Good. That's how it should be. Everyone should do their own audiobook. Know I it. agree with that. Uh, so right, give us your Instagram point. handles and your social handles. Uh, yeah, it's everything Sukhajla, S U K H O J L A. Yes, it's spelled wrong. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Good luck finding me. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry. And tickets for your tour. Tickets for my tour, yeah, all the links are on, you know, on my, uh, my website's also supercodular.com or just go to my Instagram. All the links are there. The tour runs until the end of February. So this is like the last leg of the tour. Um, so, yeah, so last chance to see it. That's it. Once it's gone, it's gone. Gas only? It's gone. Yes, yes, okay, okay. okay. Come, on. come on, come on, come on. Where do you live in, D, by the way? Where do you live? I live in Barking now, London. So Where are you originally I, from? I'm, come uh, on. I'm, I'm originally you guys have from... swapped. You guys okay, so I'm them. originally from from Sutton. This weekend I uh, would have come, but yeah, but yeah. You got I, am back. I am back. I am back. The problem is though is that I'm coming back to London on Sunday morning, so I'm like, oh, I can't. Uh, Otherwise, I would have. You don't want to be doing that. Well, no. but listen, I've got a show in Central London. Um, Honestly, so after this, I'll talk. I'll talk to the wife, and we'll actually come. <laughs> like, happen. Oh, that's I'll for permission. I love it. 
Hold on, hold on. But after this, you not gonna come after this, after this, after this, I'm gonna get to the episode. I'm gonna get to the episode. By the way, do you want to just show Mac, yourself? Mac and Vince Soggy, yeah. he's, he's gonna go, Sanj, she's actually quite funny. I, I think yeah. we could go to the show, yeah. No, again. I'm not gonna yeah, be yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I'll yeah. be like, I really Sanj, like your energy. I like your energy, yeah. Do you want to know the exact speech I'm gonna give? It's gonna be like, Sanj, you know how you're like fully on this whole let's support independent people? Well, it's had a great conversation, and I think we should go and support. And uh, we should do this for everything. The old July. And by the way, the last know. comedian that we went to see of yours was Mo Gilligan. So now we're going to see Silk. It's my choice. Done. Oh, so. wicked. Amazing. I got ways. I got ways, man. It's not difficult. You got ways. That's but it. You got to ask nicely. Ask nicely. Lark, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> <laughs> ask nicely. Marriage, marriage tips for men. Ask yeah. nicely. Ask nicely. <laughs> that's the bare ask minimum. Nice. That's the bare oh, minimum. Oh, no, no. We, did, we basically we did one episode on domestic violence, and India was so affected by that right i was like we i think we had a uh, we had a dinner a couple of weeks after and he was like yeah, we what we are your learning points and reflections after he's like i ask my wife everything now i was like do you want to do everything. this is this are the right okay way he's this? already decided in his head but he, he asks now and he's just, oh i love that that's wicked that's great Brilliant. communication isn't it it's great nah, it's, 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 it's called it's called like, like, being shit, newly man. married I'm sorry about it. What happened? When you're five years into it, yeah, fuck it. I know my boundaries. How long? How long have you? How long have you been married? I am three and a half months in. Three and a half months. Have you seen each other on the toilet yet? Yes, everything except for a number two. Okay, that's it. That's that's your next level. That's my line. That's my line. I will. I will not go past. That's your line. Personal space. India is very into personal space. Yeah, I'm very into that. I'll never go past that. I'm sorry, man. Go down the you're into personal space, but you wanted me to bunduk your pit on yes. my floor. Yes. On a day where my dad goes to the pub and he's going to come back and see us. You were yes. fine with that. Yes. So you know his massage guns, so he got, huh? Oh, yeah. The bunduk, yeah. huh? So yeah. indeed, like, he's a, he's a bit of, like, we call him spider singer. And he lives always, like, climbing yeah. and shit and thinks he's, like, Tom Cruise and stuff, huh? <laughs> the Ikadin I am, we would just, uh, he, he, he's also, he's also my videographer, like, produce content and stuff. And, uh, so we don't know that. And he goes, oh, my back really hurts. So I turn around. This guy takes his top off, takes his like bent off. He's just in a kacha. He's like, oh, how many pets? Yeah, just pop it on my back. Because there's a spot I can't reach. Right. So he, so he lies down on the floor, like just, just ready, you know, to get like, drilled. And I'm like. Um, drilled. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think, hold on, not, I think I've seen this video. Yeah, I, I think I have seen it. <laughs> oh, and then, uh, I said, Andy, look, I will do this for you, right? But know that it's Friday night. My dad goes to Red Line Pub. And if he walks in, he will not understand the situation that is happening here. And lo and behold, dad did come. Right? I just threw that bunduk away. I was like, Andy, took a prepara. And that's it, man. <laughs> this will never be spoken done. again. Never so spoken yeah, personal space. Happy days. That's the space to make. And I think we should do the uh, quick fire. This would be funny with Sook. I got them ready here. Oh, have you got them? Okay, in which I case, let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's go. Tiga? Go on. Okay, so first thing that pops into your head, no thinking about it, you just got to answer, you know, how okay, quick cool. fire works. Ready? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Alu alu pranthe, methi alu pranthe. Alu alu pranthe. Bang. Achar or chutney? Achar. Yellow dal or black dal? Yellow dal. Yellow dal. Pranthe or roti? Pronto. Favorite place in the world? Harmandar Sahib. Text, textbook answer there. Textbook answer. You know, and, 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 not, not the Golden Temple. Not the Golden no Temple. Hesitation. No hesitation. No hesitation either. No hesitation either. I right. know. Like, Straight, bam. That, okay, brilliant. Ribena or squash? Ribena. Okay, and I forgot the last one I was going to ask. Um, Russell Piers or Paul Chowdhury? Paul Chowdhury. Paul Chowdhury and uh, let's do, Indy, let's That's do a tough one either way, man. Uh, Kevin Hart versus Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock versus Dave Chappelle. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy Raw versus Dave Chappelle. Ooh. Okay, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy Raw versus Dave Chappelle. Ooh. Eddie Murphy <laughs> Raw, isn't it? <laughs> Eddie's set was there. Brilliant. Okay, brilliant. That is the end I'll of the quick it. fire round. You've Whoa, won. that was tense. May you a lot, on it, man. You, you like, you know what you want, man. I know what I like. <laughs> But yeah, I like clearly. Coffee. Easy work. <laughs> Sorted. Right, that's the end of the episode, I think. Uh, thank cool, you guys for listening. Right. And thank you You've for coming You've got to do your thing, Indy. Yes, I do. Uh, I will do that shortly. Uh, thank you for joining us on this episode. And leave us a review, mm. comment, subscribe, share. All question, of that question. lovely, fantastic, mm. algorithmic, hacking, growth hacking shit. All right, thank you. Speak next week, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.